Today, the household economic wipeout ahead. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, that is post covering finance and property news. Well, as I discussed yesterday, the latest GDP numbers were horrendous, specifically for households. And one of the things that came through in the data was that households are spending more on things that they need, the essentials of life, whilst cutting back on the things that they want, the discretionary items. And the overall slowdown in household consumption occurred despite a dramatic drop in the savings ratio to 3.7% in the March quarter, down from 11.3% a year earlier. That's the lowest savings rate, by the way, since the second quarter of 2008. And of course, after accumulating record amounts of savings over the pandemic, savings levels have now normalised and are in fact deteriorating. I also make the point, of course, that the distribution shows that savings have gone predominantly to the older generations who are largely able to avoid the rise in interest rates and rents because they own their property outright and have either small mortgages or no mortgages. So it's an unequal story with younger generations absolutely being crushed. Now, CBA economist Harry Otley drove into the data a little more deeply and presented some really interesting and disturbing information about the Australian households and how they are facing into the steepest lift in interest rates on records. The impact on the consumer will continue to build from here, he said, as further hikes are passed through to variable rate mortgage holders and as fixed rate mortgages are reset to much higher rates. This will take housing debt servicing costs as a share of income to record highs later this year. Debt servicing costs lifted by a very large 11.5% in the first quarter of 2023, and it's more than doubled over the past year as the RBA has taken the cash rate from 0.1% to 4.1%, he said. And as a share of disposable income, the increase was smaller given the still tight labour market and rising wages growth, but 6.7% of household disposable income is still the highest in the decade. And while interest rate costs have substantially risen over the first quarter of 23, mortgage repayments have yet to fully reset higher. There is a lag of around a few months before scheduled repayments shift higher in response to higher interest rates delivered over the first quarter of 2023. The RBA has raised the cash rate a further 50 basis points over the second quarter and debt servicing costs will continue to rise, putting additional pressure on household budgets. They will reach record highs later in the year, he said. And that means that there is a scary outlook for the one third of Australians with mortgages who have little in the way of savings and who have seen their real incomes collapse and of course will be facing into those record interest rate repayments. I've been tracking this through my mortgage stress surveys for some time, and now the rubber is absolutely hitting the road. But I would also make the point that as well as the mortgage holders, the renters are also being squashed, partly because of rising rents and partly because of the rising costs of living. You have to look holistically at the total cash flow of households, not just the mortgage element. And so to that extent, I think that CBA is missing some of the broader economic downturn issues that we're facing into. The bottom line is there's about a third of households are completely insulated thanks to the fact that they own their own property, have very small mortgages of it all and significant investments and in fact are benefiting from the rising interest rates. But two thirds of Australians, those with a mortgage and those in the rental sector are the ones being thrown under the bus. So the question is, at what point will this all go south? Hard to say. But it seems to me that over the second half of this year, the risks of the recession are now closer than they have been for some time. And even CBA is setting a 50% expectation of a recession, others even more so. And Deutsche Bank, of course, is talking about a cash rate at 4.6% 
or higher. So there's still some more pressure to come. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.